very great day. It's a very great moment in the history of the world. The world will see a major change. I would like to express my gratitude to President Trump to make this meeting happen. Pretty historic uh, pictures coming out of uh, Singapore overnight. ABC News correspondent Karen Travers was there. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, Karen Travers. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> Let's call it good evening because it's dark here now. <laughs> Tell us about it. I mean, this is uh, quite a moment, uh, that first handshake when the two leaders walked to the red carpet, posed in front of the U.S. and North Korean flags. It, they were serious. Their, their faces were very stern. And we were really looking for that body language. And then after just a few moments of shaking hands, they walked away to head into their first meeting, and very quickly the smile started. And the president afterwards was really emphasizing the terrific relationship that he believes he and Kim Jong-un have started really complimenting, gushing almost about the, the North Korean leader, saying what a uh, very talented individual he is, what a great negotiator he is for his country. So uh, we'll see. It's the beginning of the process, as the president said, but he indicated that he <laughs> will be inviting, absolutely, Kim Jong-un to the White House and would even entertain a visit to North Korea. Uh, so he came out after this and then spoke to the media um, after the 45-minute mm -hmm. meeting. Was there a luncheon as well? Yeah, they had a the 45-minute private meeting, about 40 minutes or so, private meeting with just their translators. Then they let in the larger delegations, and then they had that working lunch. Uh, we saw little bits and pieces of all of these events throughout the day, but it really it was a lot of photo ops. You know, we weren't hearing the substance. It was the meet and greets. It was the relationship. It was how well they get along. Then the president took questions for well more than an hour, which was a notable thing. He hasn't done that on any foreign trips so far. He seemed like he was really enjoying himself, and he would like to stick around but took a whole range of questions and, and got more into the substance of what he and Kim Jong-un talked about. I think the one big headline, well, one of the big headlines, I should say, to come out of it is the president saying he is ending the uh, joint military exercise between the U.S. and South Korea. He called them provocative. He called them inappropriate. He said we will be stopping the war games. Uh, this by the president was pitched as a way to save money. He says they're really expensive. South Korea doesn't kick in enough. But this is something that North Korea views as a threat, that they see this as a rehearsal by the U.S. and South Korea for potential military action against the North. They have consistently objected to these drills. So some are pointing that as a very big concession that the president made to Kim Jong-un. Uh, Kim Jong-un didn't meet the press, but did you get any, um, any uh, comments from the North Korean officials? Uh, no, we did not. Uh, and, you know, South Korean officials also kind of scrambling to piece together after what the president had announced about those joint exercises. So, uh, you know, in the next couple of days, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is going to be traveling throughout the region. He'll break off from the president, who's already en route back to Washington, and he'll head on to a couple countries here. And it's, you know, kind of the... Uh, I don't want to call it a smoothing over visit, but it's it's really just to make sure everybody's feeling good after this summit. Karen Travers, ABC News correspondent. Bottom line, though, this joint agreement just basically says they're going to talk more. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and the president got a little defensive about that, saying, well, you know, we only had a couple of hours. We weren't going to come up with a whole denuclearization plan. But he certainly had really set a high bar a couple of weeks ago. Ultimately, what this was is, you know, an agreement to work together. An agreement to give up weapons, but the how and when is still uh, something they have to work out. Karen Travers, safe travels. Thanks for.